Hi, this is Toby from Lift Tech Mobility. So in today's video, we're going to fully show off the Compact Plus. So the Compact Plus basically bridges the gap between what's called a lightweight chair, which is usually bet anything between sort of 22, 23 kilos, all the way down to sort of 16, um, where you're hitting carbon fiber territory, which is pretty much means it's indoor only. Um, to your multi-terrain chairs. So your multi-terrain chairs on average, the lightest multi-terrain chair is about 26 and a half kilos and they go all the way up to about 34 kilos. So um, this, this is good because it's great for travel, it's amazing inside, but it's also got good outdoor capabilities, which means unless you want to be extra hardcore doing dog walking paths and stuff, you just want to pot around to the shops, uh, go shopping, um, go on cruises, um, and go on the board, like this chair is absolutely perfect. Uh, it's got good space between the arms. The arms go all the way back and up, uh, up and back, I should say. So it means you can get underneath the table, same with this side, for eating, drinking, working. The foot plate comes up lovely and flush, so it means getting in and out is very, very easy. Quick release batteries from the side, meaning it's very easy to remove the batteries. So this is a very, very well thought out chair. One of the advantages as well, this chair is literally one of the only chairs on the market with what is called active suspension. So normal suspension is a tiny, tiny spring, which you'll see on the average wheelchair. This is active wheel suspension that has actually got proper shock absorbers so when you're going over bumps and up and down curbs um, it actually compresses into the curbs uh, or over the bumps making your ride much smoother more comfortable right so i'm going to start off inside show you how easy it is to navigate doorways even hairpin bends like that are, are doable in this chair so when we take doorways remember always come out wide and then bring it in you want to give yourself as much um, distance to go square between you and your doorway to give yourself the best chance. You can do little pulses to go through. Because I want to make a hairpin now, what I have to do to get through here is I have to go out really, really wide. I then have to bring it out and go in. So I've caught my front fork a little bit and we're down. Right, if we get that door shut, Kai, then we're gonna, gonna follow me and what we're gonna do on this outing is we're going to do some curbs, some cambers, um, maybe a bank depending on how muddy it is um, and just go for it. So, so it's relatively nippy, um, this chair goes from 0.5 miles an hour to 4 miles an hour, um, meaning it's great for indoor use and it's nice and slow and steady. But if you want to go full whack outdoors, this is me full whack, you know, it's great for beach promenade, it's not overly slow. Okay, so we're going to go over this big mound. Whenever you're going over something, choose your route. You can see that it's got different heights and raised, different raised levels. I'm going to go over the bit that's um, as smooth as possible. We want to get square on, slow and steady, front wheels will compress, and then we'll go over, nice and easy. Right, we're going to head round to the left. Um, and also, if you're watching this, this is exactly where I take people on our demo route. So you'll get an idea of if you come to us for one of our in-depth demos, where we teach you how to be safe, how to do curbs, cambers. Um, this is all the same sort of stuff that we're going to touch on. Okay, so I'm nice and comfortable in this chair. It's got the wraparound backrest. It's got our upgraded contour cushion, which comes this chair as standard, which is our best-selling item on our website, uh, which is three inches into three and a half inches of the peak, and it's contoured for a nice cushion position. So to do a drop curb, what you want to do is you want to hit it dead square, you're going to edge forward and then when our front wheels are about an inch away or two we want to stop and you always want to stay neutral neutral basically means either kind of leaning back kind of staying neutral spine neutral legs what you don't want to be doing when you're doing curves is leaning forward because it puts all the weight in the front wheels right so we're now going to let the wheels dig in and gently climb it when coming down a curb we always want to come down square so what we have to do here gain the height so we can then whip it round safely then we can come down the curb square we always want to come down curb square right what I'm going to do now is this camber so Kai if you when I, when I get onto here I'm going to face that way and then if you stand behind me I'll show people what they do with the joystick okay right so if you come here I don't know if the camera picks this up but I'm about to go along this pavement this pavement's got what's called a camber that's a left to right slope so if you've got a left to right slope, what you have to first of all do is make sure that you always maintain steady momentum through the wheels, because what's gonna happen is your wheelchair is always gonna to wanna to drift in the direction of the slope. 
that's because electric folding wheelchairs, one, they're lightweight, two, they've got what's called independent front wheels. That means they spin around like a supermarket trolley, meaning that whatever your slope is, they've got a mind of their own and will go that way. So it's down to the user to combat that. So if I've got a left to right camber, I need to point the joystick in that top left hand position. What a lot of people do is when those wheels start sliding up to the right, they jam the joystick hard left. What that does, it locks your wheels up. You always need to maintain a top left. So basically 11 o'clock on the joystick. And if I've got a right to left camber, I need to maintain a one o'clock joystick. I'm gonna get my strong position on my joystick and I'm now gonna steer into this slope slightly, holding me in a straight position. If my wheels start to go that way, I'm just gonna give it a bit more top left. Now I've held the camber, which for a lightweight chair with small wheels, cambers are a flipping nightmare. Um, and this, this chair literally doesn't really have a problem with them until they get ridiculously steep. Same again here, this is the natural camber. So I'm gonna point the joystick in that top left hand position and that will then stop me from veering off into the road. I'm gonna come up here, I'm gonna do a little 180 to show the turning circle of the chair. Right, I'm now gonna come off this uh, camber, uh, off this curb. To come off a curb, we need to be square. So I need to maintain the height so then I can whip it round to the left and then I can edge forward and little curbs and um, drops and quarter curbs we just want to do gently. If you're coming off a bigger curb, like a half curb, we want to go faster because last thing you want to be doing is going ba-dum, front wheels drop, ba-dum, back wheels drop. You want to kind of plane off it. It's a much safer way of doing it. So I'm going to go and show you what the max curb climb is for something like this chair. It's about a quarter curb um, in, in going forward. So something like this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to creep up towards it and when you've got bigger curbs it's imperative that one you get square on and two you do your little stop. So there's my two, one to two inches. I'm now going to lean backwards, let the wheels dig in and it's going to climb it. When I come off, I'm just going to come off square. Right, to so reverse up a curb, what we're going to do, and you can't go too high remember because it's a lightweight chair, it's got anti-tips. So slam the joints to the chair and reverse. Once the wheels are spun we're going to stop. Now I need to do a little pinch of grip, which is going to keep it easy to bring my arm back. I'm going to do little pulses until I get myself straight. Well, I'm nearly straight. Now I'm just going to go for it. My back two wheels should go up and over it, and my front two wheels should then follow. That's how we do a curb and reverse. This is a very typical of an English pavement. So I don't know if you can zoom in on the quality of this horrible pavement. It's got a camber from right to left this time. Um, it's got drains, it's got potholes, um, it's got loose bits of grit and gravel. So what I'm going to want to do is steer into this camber slightly to hold me going straight. I'm going to come through the middle of this rough stuff and then I want to get to about here. So you see the chair with its lightweight, it moves around more than a multi-terrain chair would, but it's far less than a lightweight chair. If you had a carbon fibre chair right now, or a narrow lightweight chair, you wouldn't even be able to do a camber like that. It's just, they're too light, the wheels are too small, they're too narrow, you've got no stability. That's why this chair, although it's narrow, it's got a nice width between it, it's 62 centimetres. If I had this same chair with a 59 or 58 centimetre, the chair would be sliding around all over the place. So this is why it's a great indoor outdoor chair. It's stable, but small and compact. So I'm gonna come through nice and slow, my wheels are just going to creep down here so, and then my back wheels are going to follow. Right, I think we'll go over and we'll see if we can do a grassy bank. I mean, it's it's very, very wet and it is muddy. Um, so I might get there and decide it's not worth it, but we'll have a look at it. So very nimble again change the direction very quickly. This chair comes with two brushless motors, 180 watt. You don't want big motors on little chairs because the output's too much and it's dangerous. You want the right ratio of motor output to weight of the chair. Right. Oh, it's cold out here today. Okay, so in a second I'm gonna come up here I'm going to talk about how one takes hill. So I'm going to come up here, so I want to be square. So I'm going to come up square on, and then I'm going to turn off to the left. Right, so whenever you do hills, 
and it's pretty muddy down there. You can see it's quite a steep hill, it's grass, it's mud. Um, it means we're going to end up having to spend ages cleaning off these wheels, but for the sake of showing you a good video, I'm going to give it a go. Anytime you do a hill, whether it's grass, um, tarmac, you want to be speed level one. It's a bit like a gearing system in a car. When you're going down a steep hill, braking towards a junction, um, the lower gear you're in, the, the slower it's going to rotate your wheels and it's going to slow you down electrically. Exactly the same with your speed. We want to be slowed down electrically. So I'm going to pick out my pathway from here. So I've got two hazards here. I've got a brick wall. Wheelchairs, people and brick walls don't mix. Second hazard is we've got a dip here. This dip actually starts from here. So I need to make sure that when I'm coming down here, my wheels stay well away from there. Because if my front wheel catches this dip, my wheelchair is going to go towards that dip. So the route I'm going to attempt to take, although it's incredibly slippery and wet, so this, we'll see how this ends up. It could be a laugh for you guys. Is we're going to go down towards here, and then we're going to go this way. I'm going to spin round, and I'm going to go up this way and around like this, and we'll just see if uh, Toby's got the wheelchair skills. Who knows? This uh, it could be. It's a 50/50 on this one. It's pretty wet. As a brake, speed level one. And then we can stop, start. Remember, this is a 50-50 if this works or not, because it's wet, it's winter, this isn't a multi-terrain chair. In the summer when I do the demos and this, it works fine going up and down. But obviously I've never tried this before. And it's pretty steep, it doesn't actually look that steep on camera, but it's, this is pretty steep. And you want to take things slowly. Right, just about down this time. Okay, so we're now going to try and spin. Wheels are digging in a little bit. So, right, now let's go back a bit so we get a little bit of a run up. Right, up wide. It's going wide, it's going wide, it's going wide, it's going, wide. It's going to bring it in, and he's up. There we go. And the chair is completely covered in mud, <laughs> but we made it up, so. I did set it to 50-50, you got a little bit of a laugh out of that one, it's very wet, um, really that's multi-terrain territory, you need a heavier chair, bigger wheels, but we did it for a bit of a laugh, I wouldn't say we pulled it off, but we got up there and down there, no one got hurt, no one was harmed in the making of this video. <laughs>